going to go ahead and we're going to jump in with uh, our introduction. I'm going to be talking to you today about the Holy Spirit and guidance and how he guides from within. And we shared last week that it's very important for us to understand that some things are better caught than taught. So as I share this word with you tonight, you're going to hear a voice on the inside of you, or you're going to hear the, the Holy Spirit rising up within you, or you're going to hear, or you're going to sense something within you, giving you divine guidance and divine direction. It's this kind of atmosphere that it's easier for God to speak. And for us, actually, he's already been speaking, but it's a good atmosphere for us to hear what the Spirit of the Lord has to say. I remember when my uh, teacher, Kenneth E. Hagan, when I was at Bible school, when he would teach and he would minister, it wasn't only what he was saying, it was what he was saying, what the Spirit of God was saying behind what he was saying. So I believe the Holy Ghost is coming upon you. The power of the Most High is overshadowing you, and he wants to speak some things to you. There's been some things he's been wanting to say to you for quite a while, or he's been saying it, but what it is is it's your response to what he's saying. And so I believe that tonight, or those that are going to listen after the fact, you're going to hear the word of the Lord in your heart, and you're going to know that you know that you know exactly what to do. Now, just quickly, remember I said you are a spirit, you have a soul, and you live in a physical body. With your spirit, you contact the spirit realm, okay? With your soul, you contact the intellectual realm. And with your body, you contact the physical realm. And we said last week, we said that the human spirit, it's very important that we train our human spirit. Just like we can train our physical bodies, get our physical bodies in shape, we can train our human spirit, cause it to be strong, cause it to be resilient, cause it causes the human spirit to be able to hear more accurately. Well, how do we train the human spirit? said that we train the human spirit by Joshua 1a, meditating in the word of God, building ourselves up in the word of God, putting the word of God in our heart, and thinking about it, and thinking about it, and thinking about it, let it go over and over and over, and that builds your inner man. Another way to build up your inner man, we're not going to get into all of them, is by praying in the spirit. But you, beloved, building up yourselves on your most holy faith, praying in the spirit. So there's ways that we can uh, build our inner man, and we're not going to get into that anymore, okay? So what is the primary way that God leads, okay? We're going to start out with, with, with the inward witness, and we're going to go down, and we're going to end at some point, not tonight, but we're going to end at some point with spectacular guidance. But we're not starting out with spectacular guidance, because I'm going to tell you what's been happening to the church, Okay. We are all expecting spectacular guidance, and we're expecting God to give us visions and dreams in the night, and those things are valid, and God speaks through dreams. He speaks through visions. He speaks that way, no question about it. But the number one primary way God speaks is, first of all, by an inward witness. And I think so often we're expecting some kind of spectacular guidance some kind of spectacular voice, some kind of spectacular vision. And, and first of all, people that are always waiting for that kind of thing, they're the ones you, to be honest, you got to watch out because, you know, you could get, you could be, there are many voices in the earth and many voices in the spirit realm. But there's one voice that we must follow, and that is the voice of our good shepherd, the voice of the Holy Spirit, who speaks primarily from within, Okay. You are the temple, the very sanctuary of the Holy Spirit. He is on the inside of you. You have a divine guide on the inside of you. He is within you, and he wants you to hear the Father's voice. He wants to guide you in all the affairs of your life. Now, this may sound a little odd to some of you, but, that, you know, I always listen to my heart. Not always, but a good portion of the time, I listen to my heart when I'm getting ready to speak or I'm going to church and listen to my heart. And oftentimes, more than not, it's so amazing to me because the colors that I wear oftentimes go with colors that the choir is wearing or the, or the people who are leading worship are wearing. And it just goes along with the feeling and the atmosphere of what God is doing. So I look on the inside. I say, Lord, what, you know, don't, 
please don't think I'm off because I'm not. I look on the inside of me and sometimes say, Lord, what should I wear? I'll get a desire to wear a certain color or to wear a certain outfit. And believe it or not, it goes right along with what many are also wearing that are in leadership in the church that I attend. So I, that's just a little side note. But it's developing your human spirit, not only in the big things, but in the little tiny intricate things. See, God is interested in everything that goes on in your life. He's interested in everything that goes on in your life. How many of you had times when you were believing God for a certain kind of pair of shoe and you've been believing and believing and believing and your heart just said to you or your, something just said, you know, just go over to Macy's, go to Macy's today. And then sure enough, those shoes are on sale. What is that? That is our father wanting to give us the good gifts that he said are already ours. It is your father's good pleasure to lavish his love upon you and give you the desires of your heart. But as we listen to him, we will be led to those places. Okay. And that's what makes walking with God so fun, where it's an intimacy with him, where it's a friendship with him, where we communicate with one another. And I feel like so oftentimes God is trying to communicate with us, but we're grabbing from over here and we're grabbing from over here, there and we're expecting all these spectacular things. And right on the inside of us, he is there. Our divine guide is on the inside of us. I don't know if you've sensed the anointing, but there's a very strong anointing here tonight. And I'll tell you why. Because many have gone astray because they're expecting all this spectacular stuff. And the Holy Spirit is wanting us to grow up. The Bible says, the way that are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. The sons of God are the mature sons of God. And those of you that are older in the Lord, God is expecting more out of you. Okay? So I think it's time for the people, the people in the church to grow up. Not that we're not going to have the spectacular guidance. We will have it. We will have dreams. God will speak to dreams. As a matter of fact, you know, I've noticed the times in my own life when God spoke to me in a dream, it was because he's put on speaking to me once. He's spoken it to me twice. He speaks a third time, and I don't perceive it. So then when I'm sleeping and my mind is shut down and my emotions are shut down, he gives me a dream, a vision in the night. Okay, but the number one primary way that God leads, guides, and directs his children is through an inward witness. I'm going to give you two scriptures. Okay, Romans 8, 14, I already said it, but I'm going to say it again. Who are those who are led by the spirit of God, they are the sons of God. Listen, verse 16 says, the spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. Of God. It's an inward witness. It's an inward knowing. It's just, it's, it's just, you bear witness. Okay. It's just something on the inside of you that says, this is the way, walk ye in it. And it's a good feeling. And it's a, a right feeling. And it's a velvety feeling. And it's a sure feeling. And it's a feeling of peace. And that's the voice of your good shepherd. It's an inner witness. You bear witness that we're the children of God. Well, you know, let, let's, let me put it to you this way. You don't know you're a child of God because somebody prophesied to you. You don't know that you're a child of God because you had a vision or a dream. You know you're a child of God because your spirit bears witness that you are a child of God. You don't know how you know. You just already pray the prayer of salvation. You confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus. You're, you're a born-again child of God. You don't know how you know that you're a child of God. You just have that witness within yourself that you are a child of God. You're so certain that you're a child of God. And that's how certain we can be with the leading and the guidance of the Holy Spirit. Okay? You don't know you're a child of God, like I said, because somebody prophesied to you or because you feel like you are. How many times do we feel like we're not a child of God? But we are. We are the children of God. Okay? The same thing holds true. You can have all kinds of stuff on the outside that says, no, that's not the way. No, that's not the way you're to do. That's not what you're supposed to do. You're not supposed to walk that way. But something on the inside says, that is the way. Walk ye in it. I don't know who I'm talking to tonight. But I'm talking to somebody. God has been trying to lead you and guide you through this inner witness. And you've been going after all these other ways. And, and 
as fleeces as well. We'll get into that. But God says it's a bearing witness. I like to put it like this. If, if you don't, you can't explain how you know, you just know. For example, and know if it's something that you're praying about or you're thinking about or you're asking God for direction on, if it's, if it's a no, what happens is, now hear me, hear what I'm, hear with your spirit, hear with your spiritual ears. A no in your spirit is like a check in your spirit. You just checked. You just, mm, you don't just feel right. It's a check in your spirit. It's like when you get to a, a, a an intersection and there's a red light. It's just, that's not the way. Don't walk in that way. It's a red light. It's not a sure, firm foundation. It's a red light. It's just something on the inside of you, like a stop signal. It's not, listen, it's not even a voice. Are you listening? It is an inward intuition. You just know that you know that you know it's not time yet. You just know that you know that you know you're supposed to stay there. You just know that you know that you know you're not supposed to move there. You just know that you know that you know it's not time to sell that property. It's just something on the inside of you. We said it last week. I'll say it again. Jesus told Brother Hagin actually in a vision that if he, he would learn how to listen to the inward witness, Jesus said, I'll make you rich. Rich is not having a million, billion dollars. Rich is a full supply. Every need met according to his riches and glory. Just all your needs provided for. If, when we listen to that inward witness, we can have that full supply. God is not against his people having financial blessings. He's against his people being covetous. But if you're praying about a certain financial thing, if you should do it or not do it, use your head, of course, but also listen to your heart. What is your heart telling you? He said, I will instruct you and lead you in the way that you should go. I will guide you with my eye, okay? But it's something on the inside of you. You see, conscience is the voice of your spirit. Reason is the voice of your mind. Feelings is the voice of your body. So you've got to really develop your inward man so that you can hear more accurately the voice of the Holy Spirit. Okay, now what, what I do, and this is coming up, and it's not the way my notes are, but I don't, it's good, we're good. What I do is if I don't know, or I don't have that inward witness, and I don't exactly know what I'm supposed to do, what I do is I wait. I wait patiently. See, God is not in a hurry. We wait. We wait on the Lord. We wait patiently. If you feel that something is pushing you, or shoving you, or, or just, just, I don't even know how to explain it. It's like, it's like pressure. Oh, I would never go with pressure in being led by the Spirit. You should back off and you should wait on the Lord. You should pray in the Holy Ghost and you should spend time alone with God. Make some time alone with God. Get along with Him. Pray in the Holy Ghost. Set aside a few days. Whatever you got to do. And then when you're walking and doing your regular things or you're driving in your car, look on the inside of you and think about that thing you're trying to make that decision on. What is your heart telling you okay if it's a yes or a go yes do it it's a feel good in your spirit it's not a physical feeling okay it's a it's a velvety like feeling in your spirit it's like when you come to an intersection and you come and you have this green light it's like it's a go ahead it's a it's a yes it's something on the inside that says go for it it's it's a it's a yes it's a knowing that this is the right thing to do. The scripture that's coming up in my spirit is, God said, I am going to lead you on the in the best path for your life. How is he going to lead you? He is going to lead you. Hey, Wendy. He's going to lead you. Hi, Julie. He is going to lead you by your heart, by that inner witness, by the voice of your human spirit. Okay, now when we talk about this leading and the inward witness, the first thing we have to think of, and we have to say this because we're living in the church world right now and everybody's expecting, you know, the supernatural and, you know, the devil, he operates in the supernatural. Do you understand that? Especially as we see the day approaching, Isaiah 61 through 5, the darkness is covering the earth and witchcraft is on the rise in the earth. And there's many voices out there that are in the, in the earth. And not every voice you hear and spectacular thing that you get is from God. 
Okay, so the very first thing, and I have a real warning for, for, for people in, in this message tonight. I just feel the Holy Ghost warning. There's a warning. We got to listen to what the Spirit of the Lord is saying to the churches. The Spirit speaks expressly. And this is a scripture I'm hearing that in the last days, some will give heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. There's spirits out there that want to seduce you. There's spirits out there that are John 10, 10. They want to kill, steal, and destroy. Okay, they want to wipe you out. They want to take you off the best path for your life. The devil wants to want you to go astray and go do something God's not telling you to do. So that's why we need, always remember this one truth. Does what is what God's saying to you in your heart to this inner witness? Does it line up with scripture? Okay, it's like this. Let me put it to you this way. Uh, a voice told me to uh, marry so-and-so, and I have all these feelings for this person, and so many feelings and so many emotions, and we're soulmates, and we just click, but they're not born again, and you're a child of God. Now, is that you, your human emotions? Is that your mind? Is that your body talking to you? Or is that the voice of the good shepherd? God said, I'm going to instruct you and lead you in the best path for your life. God knows your future better than you know your past. And he knows that if you hook up with that person who's not a Christian, the path that's before you is going to be a path that is crooked, filled with a lot of heartache and a lot of sorrow. And God wants you wants to prevent his child, which you are. You are a child of God. He wants to prevent you from heartache and tragedy and sorrow. But if we go with our feelings or we go with our emotions, then we're not going to be led accurately. So is what God's saying to you, does it line up with the scripture? What does the Bible say about what I just talked about? The Bible says, be not unequally yoked together with an unbeliever. What fellowship does righteousness have with unrighteousness? So right then and there, if the person's not a Christian, okay, it's not God's will for you. God's will for you is for you to be equally yoked together with a believer, okay? And if the person's not saved, then you pray for them. Okay, my one of my best friends. Gail Buse, she, she was Gail Smelser at the time. We were roommates at Rama. She went to Rama. She was Assembly of God her whole life. She loved God. She was an intercessor, still is, powerful woman of God, an apostle of Jesus Christ. She went to Bible school. We were roommates. And when we graduated from Bible school, she went back home and she went back to work in a, in a grocery store and she met this young man. And, you know, the young man liked her, but he wasn't saved. Okay, he wasn't born again, child of God, and he asked her out on a date. She said to me, if I'm going out on a date with him, I'm going to tell him all about Jesus. Guess what? She didn't hide her light under a bushel. She didn't hide her light. She let her light shine. How will they hear without a preacher? How will they preach except they be sent? She was praying for her husband. Oh, you know, and, and her mother had been, as well her whole life. Okay, and then a lot of praying and interceding. And here this young man comes into her path asked her out on a date, and, and she says, I'm going to preach Jesus to him. She preaches Jesus, 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 and, and that first day, guess what happened? He got born again. He received Jesus Christ as his personal Lord and Savior, okay? And now they got married, and now today they're both apostles, true apostles. So everybody's an apostle today, I know, but they're true apostles. They go into the nations, they preach the gospel to the nations, to raise up people in the nations. Her vision was always to train the nationals, to go in, train the nationals, leave, and go to the next place. Well, they're doing that today, but they're doing that as a powerful force to be reckoned with because they're a couple that are not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. And they're preaching a word, and they're ministers with their flames of fire declaring the works of the Lord and seeing signs and wonders and miracles. Now, Phil had met had met somebody else and he had not been born again and she married the guy her life would have taken a different course so i believe there's somebody listening right now that you need to hear this word of the lord this is an urgency and an unction in my spirit you need to wait on the lord you need to make sure that that person that you want to marry is a child of god okay okay does it line up with scripture Here's another one. I love this. You know, I'm not going to look up the scriptures. I'm going to try to quote it. You know, okay, you want to buy a house, and you really like that house, and you really think that's the perfect house for you. But can you afford it? Okay, the Bible says in Luke 14, 28, when you sit down and you're going to build a building, we've got to 
first consider the cost. Okay, I was telling a pastor friend of mine that I've been teaching on how to be led by the Spirit, that the Lord seems to be instructing a lot of us as leaders on the Holy Spirit, His person, His work, His gifts, and in this case, His guidance. This pastor friend of mine is an outstanding leader. He says, good, because a lot of people are making a, I'll just say it like he said it. He said that a lot of people are making a lot of stupid decisions and doing a lot of stupid things because they're not being led by the Spirit. Okay, well, we're not going to go into something we can't afford. The reality of it is, can you afford the house? Can you afford the car? Can you afford it? Now, let me tell you something about children. One thing I learned about children. Children are the heritage of the Lord. And blessed is the man and the woman whose quiver is full of them. So what I have discovered about children, you know, a person gets pregnant and they think, how am I going to how am I going to provide for this child? We already have three other children. But you know what? God always provides for the children. There's always more more than enough for that baby when that baby comes, okay? All right, so let's go on. Now, does it line up with scripture? It's very important. So what I do, and I told you, if I don't know what to do, I wait on the Lord. I get alone with him, or I just pray in the spirit, or when I'm walking around my house, I think about that decision, and I look on the inside. And if I don't have any direction, I am not going to move. You ask my team. I think sometimes it, they, I would frustrate them because I take my time. Uh, God is not in a hurry. You know who's in a hurry? The devil's in a hurry. You're in a hurry. Sometimes it's selfish ambition and pride. We just want the bigger thing. We just want the better thing. And God is saying, wait on me. It's just not time yet. It's just not time yet. See, listen, I would rather be a little behind God than way too ahead of him. So it's very important to look on the inside. And if you don't know what to do, don't do it. Okay, why do you wait on God, even specifically in the secret place? Because time, because when you go into the secret place, like we've talked about multiple times in this ministry, Matthew 6, 6, when you go into that door, that, that secret place, that secret time with him, you shut the door, you're shutting the world out, you're shutting the devil out, you're shutting out the distractions, and you're shutting in with God. And you come aside and you get quiet. This, these are the times when you get out of the mental realm and you tune into your spirit man. And this is the place where the leadings come from. Your spirit man. They that are led by the spirit of God, they are the sons of God. In the name of Jesus. Father, I pray for my friends who are listening. I pray that you would rise up big within them. I pray that you would give illumination to their mind and understanding to their spirits that they would seek you in the secret place of their heart, that they would draw inward and look unto you, Jesus, who is the author and the finisher of their faith and not look for all the other things on the outside, but that they would tune in with you. I pray, Father, for a greater measure of grace to come upon them, a greater measure of grace to rise up within them. There are so many, many, many that are listening that are in a valley of decision and they're making decisions out of their head and they're making decisions out of their emotions, and they're making decisions out of their feelings. I pray, Father, that you would instruct them, that you would lead them in the way that they should go. I pray that they won't be like the horse and the mule. I pray that you would create in them a clean heart and renew a right spirit within them, that you would take away that stony heart, Heavenly Father, and give them a heart of flesh so that they can hear accurately the voice of the good. You're a good shepherd. And you're a good God. And it's only your desire to lead them into the good and into the right path. I'm going to read you a few scriptures. Obviously, we didn't get as far as I thought. But we're good. All right? Because we have a lifetime. We have a lifetime to continue these teachings. I believe this is a much-needed teaching in the body of Christ. Okay? How many of you agree with me? Okay? Proverbs 16.9, Amplified. A man's mind plans his way. As he journeys through life, but the Lord directs his steps and establishes them. If you put God first place in your life and you say, Lord, not my will, but your will be done in my life. Hello, Greg. Hello, Kenneth. You say, Lord, not my will, but your will be done in my life. And you are totally and completely surrendered to him. It's got 
your agenda. It's his agenda. And you're saying, Lord, I give it to you. I give my life completely to you. You're not just my savior. I make you Lord. You can stand on this scripture. He man's, here's another translation. In their hearts, humans plan their course, but the Lord establishes their steps. Father, I pray that you would establish the steps of my listeners, that every step they take would be ordered and established by you. I pray, Father, that they won't look to the left, and they won't look to the right, but they would look to you, Jesus, the author and the finisher and the perfecter of their faith. Amen. Okay, here's another one. Psalms 25, 5. Here's a good scripture you can pray if you're seeking God for guidance. Guide me in your truth and teach me. For you are my God, my Savior. You are my God and my Savior. Again, you have to say, Lord, not my will. Your will be done in my life. I give you my all. I surrender my all. Whatever you want for me to do, that I will do. You said to me, you would lead me in the best path of my life, and I am trusting you to do it. He said, for you are my God and my Savior, and my hope is in you all the day long. Psalms 143, verse 10. I like this. Teach me to do your will. So if you're one of the stubborn ones he's talking about, say, all right, Lord, I admit it. Just admit it. There's none righteous, no, not one. We all have stuff that we deal with. If you're stubborn, you say, Lord, I admit it. I'm stubborn. But, Lord, I'm asking you, according to Psalms 143, verse 10, Teach me your will, for you are my God. May your good spirit lead me on a level ground. Teach me to do your will, for you are my God, and may your good spirit lead me on level ground. I guess that was a repeat. Copy and pasted that twice. Psalms 27, 11, teach me your way. Lord, teach me your voice. Teach me. Open up the eyes of our understanding. Teach my friends to hear your voice. Teach them. Give them discernment about the inward witness. Teach me your way, Lord. Lead me in a straight path because of my oppressors. So we have this guidance, this divine guide on the inside of us all the time. Okay, now I'm going to give you a warning. It's very important under the New Testament church as a believer and a child of God, it is very important not to put fleeces out. Fleece, a fleece was sent out by uh, Gideon, and he put out a fleece, and he, this is what he said. I can read it to you. He said in, in uh, Judges 6.36, Gideon said to God, if you will save Israel by my hand, as you have said, look, I shall put a fleece of wool on the flesh threshing floor. If there is dew on the fleece only, and it is dry on all the ground, then I will know that you will save Israel by my hand, as you have said. And it was so. When he rose early the next morning and squeezed the fleece together, then he wrung the dew out of the fleece, a bowl full of water. Then Gideon said to God, do not be angry with me, but let me speak just once more. Let me test, I pray, just once more with the fleece. Let it now be dry only on the fleece, but on the ground, let it be dew. And God did so that night, and it was dry on the fleece only, but there was dew on the ground. I encourage you, do not put a fleece out. Well, if this door opens and it's the leading of the Holy Spirit, or if that door shuts, it's the leading. Now, let me tell you something. God said, I've set before you an open door. No man can shut it. But the Apostle Paul said, a great door and effectual has been opened to me, and there's many hindrances or adversaries. So the devil can shut a door, and, 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 and the devil can open a door. So that's why it's very important to be led by your inner witness. Being led by fleeces under the New Testament is unscriptural. Are you listening? It does not say as many as are led by, the, by fleeces are the sons of God. God does not work, my friends, on a hit or miss method. Okay, you have his spirit on the inside of you. Talk to God long enough until you know on the inside what to do. So the primary way God leads, guides, and directs is by an inward witness. You just know that you know that you know that you know that you know something on the inside of you just knows that you know that you know. You either have a yes or you have a no. You just know. Okay, so develop your human spirit. Train your human spirit. Begin to exercise looking on the inside of you and saying, Lord, what is it? But also make sure you've surrendered everything to him. 
okay? Well, I have so much to share with you. My heart is bursting, but I'm trying to keep these Facebook Lives a, a little shorter than we, I could probably go for another hour, but I feel like we need to just break them up and I will be with you next week, same time, eight o'clock Eastern Standard Time, Tuesday night. I've already prayed for you. I am believing God for you. I, I just, I just uh, heard in my spirit, I'm see the Holy Ghost is really talking to you tonight. I hear in my spirit, the steps of a good man are ordered and established by God. He will lead you. He will guide you by that inward witness. So wait on the Lord. Be patient. Don't be in a hurry. Okay? I'm just going to wait for just a minute. Thank you, Father. We just love you. We love you, Lord. We love you, love you, love you, love you. We thank you. We praise you. We honor you. By the way, Father, I thank you that as we minister, continue to minister on the Holy Spirit, his person, his works, his gifts, how he leads, guides, and directs. Father, we ask, we covet together corporately as a body. We ask that you would manifest the gifts of the Spirit. We understand that the gifts of the Spirit were manifesting even in this broadcast, word of knowledge, word of knowledge, word of wisdom, but it came through preaching. But Lord, we also ask that you would manifest the gifts of faith working in miracles and the gifts of healings that acts 10 44 that while we yet speak the word and teach the word you begin to demonstrate yourself with signs and wonders and miracles thank you lord